One of the most common problems in Webflow is running out of space in our navbar before we reach the tablet breakpoint. We could try to add a fixed size breakpoint to compensate for this, but what happens if we need to add new links later, or even if the user increases their font size, changing the point where the nav needs to switch? In this lesson, we'll learn how to create a flawlessly responsive nav that isn't tied to Webflow breakpoints, but is just tied to when we have enough space for our nav. Meaning if we come over here to the tablet breakpoint and the user makes their font size smaller, it'll actually bring back in our full nav. And when we run out of space, it just collapses. So let's get started building this out. So let's select our Webflow nav bar and we're gonna wanna show the desktop nav for this across every breakpoint. So under settings, we'll just hide the mobile icon on every breakpoint. And that's because if the user has their font size small enough, we might wanna show the desktop nav even on tablet or a lower breakpoint. So we're not gonna connect this change to a Webflow breakpoint. We'll just leave this always being desktop version. Now we'll need two navs, and if we change the links in one, we want it to change in the other too. So inside the default Webflow menu element, I just have this list element that holds the links. I'll go ahead and turn that into a component. I'll call it something like nav links and go ahead and create. So now that we have that component, let's select this whole nav and let's give it a class of is desktop. And we're going to want to have a div that wraps the two navs together. So I'll wrap this in a div, I'll call it nav wrapper, and let's give it a position fixed to the top of the screen with a higher Z index. And now let's go ahead and duplicate this nav. So we have two in here, and we'll give the second one a class of is mobile. And we'll go ahead under settings and show the mobile icon across every single breakpoint for the second nav. So now we can choose when to switch between the two. And let's go ahead and style this menu element. Um, I'll just give it some padding and I'll throw this container class just so it matches this padding here. And let's give it some top and bottom padding. And let's also go ahead and make the background color white like so. Now we're going to want to have a mobile variant for this component here. So let's edit this component and on this list element, let's give it a class of is mobile. And we'll use that to change the flex direction, set it to stretch, and we'll go ahead and remove this class. Now we will need to save these two classes together on the style guide page. So we can just create an element that has both those classes. That way it doesn't actually clear it when we go to clean up unused styles. But what we can do is give this element, this list, an attribute of class, and the value will be is mobile. And that of course applied the class to both instance of the component, but we can link this value to a component field called state and create. And that way on this first instance, we can delete the is mobile class. And on the second one, we'll keep it. Now that is mobile class is currently only being applied to the list but we can apply it to any other elements, like I might select this link, give it a class of is mobile, and that same class name can do something totally different because it's on a different element. So in this case, I'm gonna wanna give these links a bottom border and maybe reduce that border color some, or remove is mobile here, and I'll under settings, give it a class, and I'll link it to the same component field that's managing our list. So I'll apply that here, and that way if we remove is mobile, it's gonna remove it from the list and also from that link inside. So this one field is adding a class to multiple elements and I can just select any other list and connect it to that same component field, any other link. That way they all are getting the is mobile style from that one component field. So now that we have that set, we also have some negative margin here and that's just to pull these two buttons closer together. Notice if I remove that, they're further apart. So what I want to do is give this a class of is mobile, and I'll use that to zero out the negative margin on mobile. I'll use that to maybe add a bit more top margin to separate these two here, like so. And I'll also use that to give this one maybe some bottom margin to space these two buttons a little bit further apart. And um, for all menu items, we could just set text align left, like so. That won't affect desktop any. Um, so let's go ahead and remove is mobile from this, and then we'll go ahead and give this a class and link it to the value is mobile. And so now this is spaced apart without affecting the desktop version. And we can continue to do that for any other elements we want to change in our mobile version. So now that we have that set, let's choose where we need to hide the desktop and show the mobile one. 
and it looks like it's running out of space roughly around maybe the 1120 mark, which is 70 rim. So right here, we'd want to switch to the mobile nav. So let's go ahead and select this mobile nav and let's set it to display none by default. And the desktop one will be blocked by default. And we can head over to our embed and let's just create a simple media. So we'll do um, at media like so, and we'll pass in a max width of basically 70 rim. And so let's go ahead and say, we want to grab the uh, nav is desktop. So we're grabbing that is desktop nav, and we want to set it to display none below that 70 rim sort of screen size. And we'll go ahead and copy this again. And we'll say, uh, we'll paste that in. We'll say is mobile nav, and we'll set that one to block. And we're using rim here so that it's not just based on a pixel screen size, but if the user increases their font size, where it changes will also increase. So this will work good there. Let's go ahead and save it. And sure enough, as soon as we cross below that 1120 sort of screen size, it switches to the mobile version. Now, so far, if we increase the font size here, it's not actually going to switch. And that's because Webflow isn't actually increasing the font size. It's just a simulation of that, but it will work on the published site. So on the published site, if the user increases their preferred font size, it's going to switch over automatically to that uh, mobile nav. And if we're on a smaller like mobile screen size and the user decreases their preferred font size, it'll actually go back to the desktop version. At first I thought using EM instead of rim here would work to keep the Webflow preview in sync to where whenever we increase the font size, it would hopefully just switch. But that EM is still just based on the root font size, which isn't what the Webflow simulation is adjusting. But if we did want this to work inside Webflow Preview, we could select this nav wrapper and use container queries instead of media queries. So on the nav wrapper, we'd give this under custom properties a container dash type, and the value would be inline dash size. And we could open our embed. Container queries have 90% browser support. Uh, we could change this at media to at container, max width of 70M. And if we save that, now what we should notice is this actually works inside Webflow. So if we increase our font size, it eventually just switches over like so. And if we head to tablet and we decrease our font size, it eventually just pulls back in the desktop nav. So this is completely based on the correct size. If we were to add new links to this nav later on and need to change where this is actually switching, we can easily just go into our embed and change this one value. So that's how to create a responsive nav in Webflow.